Okay, at this point, what I want to do, guys, is show you after you've built your Photoshop how to import that into Flash to start working with those layers and build your banner up. And this is kind of an example of the front end of the banner here. We've got a little, let me go ahead and use the scrub bar here and scrub along here. You can see a slide in always, and that fades in. And then be there. So there you go. And if I don't like where that be there is, I just move that be there. You see, just move it over. Okay. Cool. And so I'll show you how to do this, and it switches to the other banner, and you're going to be actually be animating the other, other, other part of the banner as well. So let's go ahead and uh, create new. When you create new, you're going to want to go to templates, and you go to templates, you want to choose what? 728 by 90, because that's what you create in Photoshop. And so here's my new banner right here. And at this point, what I want to do is I want to go to file, go to import, and I'm going to import to stage. And what am I going to import? Any, any guesses? Absolutely, the flash banner that I made in Photoshop. I'm going to click on that. Now, here's an important part. I want to decide what I want these to be. So I'm going to let all my uh, texts, you can see that it's marked by T. You see, that's what, that's what that is. That's a text. These are images, for example. I want all my texts to be uh, vectors. Now, there's a difference between a vector and a bitmap. And basically, a vector is mathematically drawn, and that's treated in your book, and that's another topic I wanted to cover tonight, and where a bitmap is actually just a bunch of pixels. So the thing about vector shapes is that when you increase their size, they look the same. They still look good. And that's one of the great things about Flash. You can make vectors, and you can make them smaller or larger, but they still look good. But when you have a bitmap and you expand it, what happens to it? Looks blurry. Looks blurry, and that's called, we say it, pix it pixelates. Yeah. Now, the only problem here is simple things drawn in vector are great in Flash. Complex things drawn in vectors actually take a lot of processing power. So you want to be careful of how many vectors that you use. But using vectors for shapes usually is optimal. I'm going to click on that. Just hit Control, click on all of my, excuse me, let me Control, click on all of my uh, text there. You see I'm selecting those? And when I come to this option right here, it gives me the option to do what? Choose vector outlines. And so now, see, I got a little change here. See that icon change right there? That means they're going to have vector outlines. The rest of these, I want these bitmaps to be flat bitmap images. I do not, okay? So it says flatten bitmap images. Basically, it just compresses it all into an image. And I'm happy with what I have there. So I come along here to the OK button, just below here. Hit OK, and then it imports all that into Flash as layers. And not only did I get the layers, but I also what? got the names that I gave it in Photoshop. Isn't that super cool? That is fantastic. So everything's organized in folders as I organized it in Photoshop and also organized in uh, layers. That's pretty cool. Now just as part of a, a programming artifact you get this layer one right here. don't need that anymore. That didn't come from Photoshop. It's just an artifact. So I'm going to just throw that into the trash can. Okay? Maybe it's trying to help me out program something else. So now what I'm actually want to do, I actually want to start playing around with separating my layers. So if I put my eyeball out there, I got that go to okay and notice it doesn't show very well but I'm gonna fix that up in flash and show you how to do that so I actually want this to be further out my first one is the first one I want to appear is actually what this first banner right here so and I actually want to go out about to 70 on that one so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on that you see that right there and go over to 70 because remember I'm running at how many frames a second do you think 24 Flash is running here at 24 frames a second, but that's typically a little too fast for a banner. 12 is a little too too slow, so I'm going to click right here on this banner right here. No, 15 is usually the number that most people choose. So I'm going to go to my properties. Let's bring that up. Let me go ahead and hit that eyeball. Click on the stage. Click on properties. And I want you to change this to 15 for me. Let's go 15 frames a second. That's typically what a lot of people choose. Okay, Not too fast, not too slow. It's usually pretty good for a banner. And then let me go ahead and get rid of this. Don't need that anymore. I can get that out of the way. And so right here, I'm going to click on my bottom thing, and I actually want to pull that all the way out to frame 70. So that lasts for about how long? If it's 15 frames a second, how long do I last? Yeah, something like that. Around almost five, right? So that's pretty cool. Good, 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 good. So now what I want to do is I have my frame right here. I want to bring it all the way out to frame 70. I get about four or five seconds out of that. That's how long people are going to look at that, and then they're going to see something else, and they won't feel too bored, and it won't be too fast. Click on 70. I want you to hit the F5 key. And when you hit the F5 key, what it did for you is just basically just extended the frame for you out to 70. Okay? All right, there we go. Now, I don't want these frames underneath to be under that, right? I want them to be what extended beyond frame 70 because it's going to still switch banners. So I'm going to hit my Control key and just start selecting all of these. You see that? And all I have to do now is slide all these out beyond frame 70 to frame what? 
71. 71. There you go. Let go of them. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, undo this so you can actually see it. So if I bring this up now, you'll see if I hit this scrub bar, you can see when I go from 70 to 71, I'm switching between those frames. You see that? Cool. So that's really easy stuff. I mean, one of, the, one of the great things about Flash is how easy you can move the frames around. Okay, and we try to kind of show that at the beginning of the class, but now that we're starting to get into more of the advanced programming or the beginning of the advanced stuff, now I can go ahead and open this up, and I can see all my stuff actually now on the, the on the Flash. Hopefully on the Flash. If I click one of these banners, there's my "Be there always." Woohoo! Give me like of a romantic feel. You know, this is the banner I want my wife to see. You know, when uh, that I programmed that. Okay. Welcome to the love boat. <laughs> the love boat. Now that this is in Flash, see how things are so much easier to move around in Flash and Photoshop. You know, I have to control T or anything like that. So what I want to do, I actually want these animate in. Okay, fly in and animate in. And I'm going to actually not create a custom animation here. I'm just going to use some of my presets to do that for me ra very rapidly. So let's click on one of these. Okay, I'm just going to. And you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to start using some guide la layers. So I'm going to show you something I haven't shown you before. I'm, first, I want to bring the ruler in. And from the ruler, I can drag off the guide layers. So I'm going to go to View and go to Rulers and click on that. And now I see how these rulers, so you can see this is 0 and all the way goes up to where? If I watch my rulers, it should go what? Yeah, about 728 right there. See, and if you look at the other side, this is 0 right here and goes down to what? About 90. See, so the ruler shows me where it's at. And now what I'm going to do is come and just drag from the ruler, and when you do, you get a guide layer. Isn't that cool? And now the guide layer doesn't show up in the programming. It's just used for... Uh, for absolutely. And you bring the guide layer over here. I'm just going to line that up. That's where that's going to go. Probably about the middle right there. That's where the uh, registration point is. And let's go right here. The registration point is basically the point that's being animated. So I want to make sure I go back to that guide layer. So at this point, we're actually start with the always. They're going to animate that first. And let's go ahead and get off. I can lock this layer now so it doesn't go on there. Let's go on the first one. See, when I click that uh, keyframe, the layer uh, highlight it. And I'm just going to go ahead and bring it all the way to the end here so it's off the stage. All right. And I want to go to a preset and choose an appropriate preset for it. And let's hear the preset motion set right here. And let's look at fly and left. That's what I want to do, right? Just fly it in and animate it. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. Go ahead and click the OK button or apply button. And it's going to animate for me but not in the right spot, right? Where do I want to animate to? This point right here on the keyframe. So I just grab this animation right here, and I stretch it out to where it's supposed to go. And actually hug that, that guide layer for me. See that? So when I run this or just scrub the bar, there it goes in. Now, I actually want to make this just a little bit further because its animation is going to be kind of fast. If I want to extend my keyframes, all I do is grab the end of it and drag it out. Look at that. Isn't that pretty cool? So at that point right there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just hit the end of that, and I'm going to hit F5, and that extends it for me, but it's not animating yet. It just animates beyond that point. See that? Animating right in. And I'm going to do the next one next time. So what I've done in this uh, port part right here is I've actually animated this first one, right? So it slides in, and I want to animate the second one, right? So that's pretty easy, right? I'm just first of all going to just pull it over into place where it needs to go. Pull over appropriately there you go and that's in place and then I'm just going to choose the motion right so I've got a motion preset right here here it is down below the screen so let me bring that up and the motion I want for this particular oh, here's my motion presets let's pull that docket over here let's click on it there you go and the motion I want right here is to fly in left so once I've got the motion I want all I have to do is what hit the apply button and that's pretty easy, right? That's pretty fantastic. Not a lot of work there. And I just want to make sure that it goes to the right place so I can grab this little anchor here. And I know that it wants to anchor right there in the middle. So let's go take a look at the timeline because that's what we want to look at. So go window timeline. And I messed up, right? Because I don't want it here. I want it over here. So, you know, I'm going to just hit Control Z a few times. There you go. I want to actually grab this frame and just pull, oh, excuse me. I actually want to grab this frame and pull it to where I want it to go because I really don't want it to come in until the other one's kind of tweened in, right? So I put it where it's supposed to go. I get blank frame there so you don't see it. And then once all of a sudden it comes, it starts tweening. So at this point, I got it where I want to go. So I just, once again, go to my motion presets. And I go ahead and hit fly and left. I hit apply. There you go. And I have my other one flying in. Now, uh, at this point, I want to make sure I see something at the end. So I want to make sure I hit what key to extend that keyframe. F5. There you go. Extends it for me. And so now we have them both flying in. 
And once again, this one doesn't quite fly in where I want it to. I want it to fly in right here. So let's extend that to right here. See that? And it's where it's supposed to be. I need to bring it up just a little bit. Okay, there you go. I can use my arrow key to bring it up and down. And we've got the first set of animation done. Isn't that fantastic? There you go. Isn't that pretty cool? Now, we're going to flip over to the other side. And so next time, we're going to show you how to do the second frame of the animation. Very good.